Welcome back, friends. I hope you're having a delightful day. Today, we're going to work on a doll that I received from a friend of mine. There is barely any information out there about these dolls. There were like five or six ethnicities. I believe this one is called Cat, and she's a Latina doll. Comment if you know any more information. I'd love to know. Anyway, I had no idea what I wanted to do with her, so I asked my TikTok followers. Let's see what they suggested. So out of all the suggestions I received, the majority of people wanted Coraline. I mean, look at that head shape. It was too perfect to pass up. So this doll was originally made for Old Navy. There was a set of six and they were just Old Navy dolls. I was looking for a doll to practice repainting on and my friend Patty was giving away this doll and just gave her to me. I was struggling with removing the headpiece from the neck. Since this doll is vinyl, I was able to pour boiling water on top of her and that loosened up the plastic. Because Coraline has blue hair, that meant I had to get rid of all of this brown hair, which meant pulling out all of the hair plugs. One eternity later. This part was so tedious and took forever. Finally, it was time to remove the face paint. So I used 100% acetone and some cotton pads and it came right off. Now it's time to give her a face. First step is Mr. Super Clear. So I put on my safety gear and put her into my spray box. Then I get out my watercolor pencils. And I use a brown to create basic shapes for the eyes. Then I start laying out basic colors just to get an idea of what it might look like. And then I go over the lines with a little bit darker pencil. This is where you really want to start refining and perfecting your lines. Then I start going in with a black just to create some shadow and some depth. Now Coraline has a very pronounced nose, but this doll doesn't. So I took some soft pan pastels and began adding some shading in depth. This also included shading the lips, nose, and chin. I even added a highlight just to try to bring the nose out further. and continued adding shading to the nose, making sure to spray with Mr. Super Clear in between just so I could save my progress. And then added some pink to her cheeks for blush. And some base color for her lips. We'll continue refining these colors as we go along. Now that I had the base colors in, it was time to start adding shading and depth. I did this by using darker shades of brown, starting from the outside and slowly moving inward. We'll get back to those soon, but first I wanted to start on the eyebrows. First I started putting in the rough shape of the eyebrow in with a mustard yellow, mostly because this was easier to erase and fix if I needed to. Then I began going in with darker and darker shades of brown making sure to delicately draw in the little hairs. Then after setting my colors with Mr. Super Clear, I went in with white paint. I really wanted the whites of the eyes to be white. Coraline's eyes from the movie have kind of a sunken in, rounded shape. So I kind of wanted to add that into my eyes too. So I lightly added shading to the top with browns and blacks. Then I began adding some shading to the top of the iris. First by outlining the entire iris and then slowly going in and adding depth to the top. One thing to keep in mind while painting dolls is that you can never do it in just one layer. Eventually the layer that you're on gets so saturated with color that it won't let you add anymore. This is why it's important to do things in stages and spray with Mr. Super Clear in between. Next, I wanted to add some more depth around the eyes. So I painted some more with some brown pan pastel and added an extra layer of color to the lips and touched up the whites of the eyes. 
My next step was to paint her freckles. So I watered down some brown paint and lightly dabbed it on. Next, I went in and added some fine details to the iris of the eye. Then it was time to seal it. Because these are the final coats of Mr. Superclear, I decided to do something a little different. First, I sprayed with the UV matte, then sprayed with a semi-gloss, then a final coat of the UV matte. This helps to give her a healthy glow. Next, I added black 3.0 to her pupils. Then it was time to add a gloss varnish to the eyes and lips. Adding this helps in two ways. First, it gives the eyes and lips a wet look. Second, it really helps to make the color look more saturated. She's not perfect, but I really think she's starting to look like Coraline. In order to protect the makeup that we've already worked on, I decided to cover her in cellophane. Then I gathered some very stretchy, almost t-shirt-like material and draped it over the head, trying to keep the fabric as smooth as possible. Then I secured it with a rubber band and pulled it tight, double checking that the fabric is smooth where the hair will need to go. Next, I pulled out some tacky glue and began applying it directly to the head. I applied it to everywhere that hair would go, then let it dry overnight. After drying, the cap was pretty hard, so I cut away the excess fabric, and I'm left with a pretty decent skull cap. The next step was to paint it blue. This is just in case you might see the skull cap through the hair. Now I need to let this dry overnight. So I decided to try my hand at making a yarn wig. I've never done this before, so bear with me. I started by measuring out the length of hair I wanted, then found an object that was the same length and wrapped the yarn around it several times, then cut one end, then folded these new strings of yarn in half and tied them to a pencil. The next step was to take a fine tooth comb and a dog slicker brush to comb out the yarn. Then I used a hair iron on the lowest setting to straighten the yarn, then cut the hair away from the pencil. Next, I separated the yarn pieces into smaller pieces and used hot glue to glue them together. Then cut away the excess glue. This creates something called a hair weft. Now I only need to make about a million more of these. After the blue paint had dried, I drew in where the hair was going to part. I did this with a silver sharpie so I could see it really well. Next, I pulled out the tacky glue and began to glue the hair wefts to the bottom back part of the wig cap. After I had gotten pretty far with that, I started working on the part line. The trick with the part line is to glue the wefts down the opposite direction than you want the hair to lay, then fold it over. Then do the same thing with the other side of the part. Then layer the hair underneath those pieces in the direction you want the hair to go. And you just keep repeating this process until you're finished. I did add another part line to the back of the head so you wouldn't see a seam. Then I gently brushed the hair out. It's still not styled or cut or even attached to the head yet, but I think it looks pretty good. In the movie, Coraline's nails are painted blue. So I grabbed some blue acrylic paint and a very tiny paintbrush and got to painting. After two coats of the blue, I went in with a gloss varnish to make them shiny. Next, I wanted to start working on her hair clip. I started by going to Amazon and buying these cute little dragonfly charms. The problem is that they are silver and they need to be gold. So I painted one of them gold. I knew I wasn't gonna find rhinestones that were small enough. So I painted on the gems then glued the charm to a blue barrette. In the movie, there's a character called the Other Mother. In order to get Coraline to stay with her, she tries to get Coraline to replace her eyes with buttons. Some people like to imagine her with the button eyes, so I decided to make her some. I went to the store and bought buttons, and then used black yarn to try to make it look like there were stitches in them. My wife helped with this part. We cut off the yarn tail and then glued the button to a neodymium magnet. Neodymium magnets are very strong. Then, using a stack of magnets to guide the way, we glued magnets inside the head. This took two sets of hands. 
Then it was essentially just trying them out. I think they look convincingly spooky. This way she doesn't have to look spooky all of the time. Coraline's character model has these gigantic but adorable ears sticking out. Even while watching videos by the original hair designer, Suzanne Moulton, you can see that the ears stick out for forever. So I got out my handy dandy A's two-part epoxy sculpt and measured out equal parts of A and B, then mixed it together thoroughly for two minutes. I've never sculpted ears before, so it took a couple tries to figure out what I was doing. But I finally came up with a shape that I liked. Then I let that cure for 24 hours. The next day, I started to mold epoxy over the doll's original ears. This helped create a base to stick my ears in. You see, I wanted her ears to be removable in case her new owner didn't like the large ears. Now we need to let this cure for 24 hours. Now they're fully cured and it's time to start refining them. I carved deeper holes to cover up the doll's ears and sand them with finer and finer grits of sandpaper. This helps them to look smooth and more realistic. And I made sure to test fit them along the way. I think they look pretty cute. What do you think? Then it's time to spray them with Mr. Super Clear so it gives the paint a little bit of a grip to hang on to. I decided to paint these with my airbrush so it had a more even texture. I then added shadow and texture to them with pan pastels. And then finalized them with another spray of Mr. Super Clear. The ears may look super goofy without hair, but I think it's going to be super cute with it. So the next step is to glue on Coraline's wig. So I pulled it back into a ponytail so I wouldn't get glue in it, and used E6000 to attach it to the scalp. Then used a few rubber bands to make sure it would stay in place. Then let the glue sit for 24 hours. The next day, I used a spray bottle to dampen the hair. Then laid cling wrap on top of it so it would stay in place. This helps to teach the hair to lay down flat then secured it with rubber bands, and then we waited another 24 hours. Unfortunately, something I didn't know about Mr. Super Clear is that it gets ruined in water. I tried to repair it several ways, but the only option was to wipe it all off and start again. Yeah, it's really frustrating. However, sometimes things are meant to be, and good things come from bad. I am much more pleased with how this face up came out. Since this doll was made in 2009 and was only sold at California Old Navy stores, it means that nobody makes anything for these dolls. So since I want to do this outfit for Coraline, it means I have to make it myself. I had my wife design and 3D print the boots for me. Then after they were cured, I put them into my spray box and sprayed them with a canary yellow airbrush paint, then sealed them with Mr. Super Clear Matte. After those dried, I took them back over to my work table and painted the soles black. I did have to do some touch-ups in a few places, but they looked pretty adorable afterwards. So I took them back over to my spray box and sprayed them with Mr. Super Clear Gloss this time. I did this so I could get that shiny rain boot texture. And I think they look adorable. I hunted and hunted for fabric at the fabric store, but nothing was right. Especially for her striped socks and striped shirt. So I knew I was gonna have to make my own. I started by measuring the doll's body, then scaled a picture of Coraline to the same dimensions. This way I could make sure that my patterns were scaled appropriately. So I laid out my design and colors and began to make a repeating pattern. And did the same thing with the socks. I made my stripes the same height as the ones pictured and sampled my colors directly from the photo as well. Then made a repeating pattern. Lastly, I uploaded those patterns to Spoonflower and placed my order. And when they arrived, they looked absolutely perfect. Thankfully, my friend Patty sent her with some socks. 
This meant that I could take the socks apart and use that as my pattern. So I ripped the seams out of the back and traced it on a piece of paper. Coraline's socks are much longer than these ones, so I had to extend the pattern a bit. To make sure my pattern matched on both sides, I folded the pattern in half and then cut it out. Then traced my pattern onto the fabric with fabric chalk. Fabric chalk allows me to see my lines to cut but won't stain the fabric. Make sure to place your pattern on the fold line so it makes one complete piece. Then I use a rotary cutter to cut it out of the fabric. I first sewed the cuff of the sock and then sewed down the edge. Then I had fun just trying it on her. I have to say, she's looking pretty snazzy. Next, we'll try her shirt. So again, because this is a rare doll, I don't have any patterns for her, which means I have to make my own. Now, this is gonna sound really weird, but I started by covering her in cellophane and then wrapping her in painter's tape. It'll make sense in a moment. Just stick with me, okay? Okay, now that the body is covered, I can now start drawing on where my seam lines are going to be. I start by drawing the shape of the neck, then the seam down the back, and the length of the shirt, the armholes, the seam under the sleeve, and the seam down the side. Then I began to cut it out along those seam lines. Now I had pattern pieces for this specific doll. So I traced those pieces onto a piece of paper, then cut them out, then transferred it over to my fabric with sewing chalk, and cut it out with my rotary cutter. Once all of my pieces were cut out, I moved over to my sewing machine. I started by sewing the shoulder seams. Then I sewed on the sleeve, cuffed the wrist end of the sleeve, then sewed from the wrist to the hip. and we have the beginnings of a shirt. Next, I did the same with the other side, then folded over and hemmed the back opening. Afterward, I took a strip of fabric and folded it in half and sewed it to the neck. Then sewed some Velcro up the back of the shirt. And finally, we have a shirt for Coraline. I don't have a skirt pattern, so I had to draft my own. I began by measuring her waist, her hips, the length of the skirt, and her rise. Then drew a line to signify the waist and found the midpoint of that line. Next, I drew a line down the center part the length of the skirt, then marked her rise measurement and drew a line to signify her hips. Afterward, I drew a line to signify the bottom of the skirt, then connected the remaining dots. Then I folded along the midpoint so that both sides of the pattern would be even, and cut my paper pattern out. I found this great fabric on Etsy. It's not the right texture, but the print looks pretty darn close. After cutting out my pieces, I hit the edges with fray check. When you have little tiny seam allowances with little tiny garments, you don't want it to fray and get rid of that seam allowance. Then I sewed up the sides of the skirt and pressed open my seams. Next, I cuffed over the bottom of the skirt to hem it. Then I folded over a strip of fabric to make a waistband. Then sewed the back of the skirt up halfway. This is so someone can easily get it on and off of her. I finished it with a snap in the back and then we have a skirt. One of the final pieces I needed to make was her iconic raincoat. I found a Blythe pattern online that I think is going to fit. I couldn't find any raincoat fabric, so I decided to go with this satin. So then I cut out all of the pieces. This type of fabric loves to fray, so I made sure to apply fray check. Then I followed the directions by sewing up the hood. I'm going to be really honest with you. The further and further I got into sewing this project, the more convoluted and insane the directions got. I mean, look at this piece. It doesn't make any sense. So, I couldn't find an easy way to explain it to you all. Sorry. I secured the front with Velcro and hand-sewed an invisible stitch in order to close the hole in the back. Honestly, 
This was the most frustrating project for the entire doll. This is a project that I probably could have found a pattern for, but decided to make my own. I decided to make the main part of the bag just one solid piece, with folds in it to differentiate the different sections of the bag, and then two narrow pieces sewn up the side. I decided to use felt for this project because her original bag looks like it's made out of felt. Plus, felt would give it a little bit of sturdiness so it would stand up on its own. I figured out how long my strap should be by cutting out a strip of paper and then wrapping it around the doll. Then I cut out my felt at that length. I started putting the bag together by putting creases where all the different sections of the bag would be. Then I sewed the side sections inside the bag and attached my straps. Now that Coraline's hair is finally attached to her head, I needed to trim it up so it looked like her cute little bob. After I was completed with that, I decided I needed to make a key and a seeing stone. Luckily, there were some patterns on Thingiverse, so we just scaled them appropriately and printed them out. I decided to paint the scene stone in this prismatic paint. It's really neat, because it shifts color from yellow to green. And of course I painted the key black. When those were both thoroughly coated, I sprayed them both with Mr. Super Clear Gloss. This gave them a shiny, magical quality. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I usually put a little bit of artwork on the back of all of my dolls' heads. This is also where I put my signature, and Coraline will be no different. Since the black button eyes play such a huge role in this movie, that's what I decided I was going to put on the back. I started with a rough drawing in a color similar to the skin tone so that if I messed up I could erase it pretty easily. Then outlined it in black and began to color it in. In order to get a flat, consistent texture, you have to spray with Mr. Super Clear in between each layer and do several layers. Once I was happy with the coverage, I started adding in highlights and shadows. This is where the button starts to look three-dimensional. Then I added a drop shadow to make it look like it was sitting on top of the doll's head. Then I refined my signature and marked that she was the 13th doll I've made. I know it's kind of goofy, but I love doing it. And here she is! Enjoy the final Coraline! a comment with your favorite part of this project. I really want to hear it. If you like this doll, check out some of my others. Also, be sure to subscribe and to hit that notification button. Every like, share, and comment helps my channel grow and supports me as an artist. And as always, have a delightful day!